Thomas here with Mudge Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I am once again working on my Viking cosplay. I've made a bunch of the peripheral stuff and thought it's time to make the armor. I went on to Medieval Collectibles and purchased a leather set of armor. And I just wanted to embellish it just a little bit to bring it into the Zelda world. So all I'm going to do today is make a plate to go over the chest and at the top of the arm bracers and legs just to, to kind of accent it a little bit. And I need to tie some metal pieces into the helmet so that it goes together. So today we are building some Viking Link armor. Let's get to building. I bought this armor around Christmas time at 25% discount. At the recording of this video, it's currently priced at about $200 for this set. I know that's not cheap, but it is what it is. My entire Viking cosplay build was actually centered around these pieces that I bought from Medieval Collectibles. They are not a sponsor, but I would love it if they would be. I've bought parts for my Knights Templar Iron Man from them and several bits that will go with this cosplay. Cosplay. They have excellent quality products. You could definitely make this out of EVA foam if you wanted to, but I thought I would save myself some time and make this armor a little bit more substantial. I started by drawing out a couple of patterns to fit within the top portions of the leather armor. I didn't want to cover up too much of it, but I needed it to kind of fit with the helmet that I've already built and bits that I plan on building to go with it. Once again, let me iterate that I am not trying to make a historically accurate Viking armor or Link armor. It is a mashup of the two and my own personal aesthetic choices. I tried to make each plate have a Viking rune mixed with a Zelda the motif. I trace my pattern onto some 6mm wet the foam from Cosplay Apprentice and cut it all out. <laughs> I thought about trying to turn each piece into knot work, but after a couple of attempts and much frustration, I decided to keep it simple and just burn in a couple of lines. I put on my respirator and heated up my wood burner to begin burning out my marked grooves. You don't want to breathe in the nasty fumes from burning foam. I move slowly through the foam and once it has cooled, I sand the grooves to get most of the melted bits out. You may want to burn it with the parts on your table. I'm holding it up so that you can get a better view of what I'm doing. I know you may not think of this while watching my videos, but a lot of times my view is partially obscured with the camera in front of me to get a good shot. Otherwise, my giant head would be obstructing the view. I have an articulating swing arm that allows for a lot of positionability, but finding the right camera spot can sometimes be difficult. Assembly time. This build is pretty simple in terms of parts. I drew a midline to help me center the parts and position my pieces on there to trace the orientation. Then I did my best to just get the contact cement in those areas to limit the weird texture after painting parts. Once the contact cement is no longer wet to the touch, the parts are ready to tack together. <laughs> The cat 
I'm using What The Foam because it's much more dense than regular EVA and I know that I'll need that rigidity to work with the leather. I thought about doing these bits in leather but I needed to make them look like metal to fit the rest of the armor. My chest piece has a Valk nut to replace the Triforce and the Loftwing symbol from the Royal Crest in Zelda. My arm bracers have a Tiwaz rune with hilt pieces from the Master Sword on each side and the Grease have an Algis rune with a Kokiri symbol on each side. That's a lot of words I don't know how to pronounce. <laughs> Mainly I tried to pick things that were symmetrical at least as far as the runes were concerned. Then once I had those picked I tried to find things from the Zelda games that could kind of work with those parts. To make my armor look like it is attached with rivets to the leather, I'm going to use my rotary tool to sand in faux recessed rivets. One of my stone bits has this concave top to it and is almost the perfect size that I need. I tested it on a scrap piece of foam and liked how it looks, so now the sketchy part will begin where I decide where rivets go as I go. <laughs> I don't really care if they're perfectly spaced, I just want them to lay in similar areas from left to right. and fall somewhere between raised bits. When you do this technique with a high density foam, you need to go slow and back off frequently because the bit will get really hot and start to melt the foam into a semi-liquid that is piping hot and will splatter all over you with the centrifugal force of the bit. Also, if you hold it down for too long, it'll distort the rivet bump. I would recommend practicing on a scrap piece of material before you do it to your time spent parts so that you can kind of get a feel for how the material reacts with the tool. <laughs> Now two coats of Plasti Dip just on the top and sides. To get the base to look more like aged metal, a light misting of silver spray paint was applied. You may notice I added a slight bend in my arm and leg pieces and now there is a more drastic curve. I heated up the back of the foam carefully to make sure that it would bend around my forearms and shins when the armor was on. The woven leather drastically bends and with the paint on the foam you don't really want that flexibility because it's going to crack the paint. This will lock my armor into a more permanent end position. <laughs> I went in and hand painted all the raised bits with black acrylic paint to make the gold rub and buff stand out better. I started out with a brush but quickly abandoned that application method to go with the tried and true finger painting approach. I did have to use the brush to do the sides to get into those tight areas though. Thank you. 
I know some of you may be cringing at the concept of me putting foam onto this nice leather armor and trust me I thought of several different approaches that I could take and I'm, I'm not a metal worker so I can't do the legit thing but now it's time to merge these two materials together no turning back this could be a couple hundred dollar mistake uh, here we go I position where I want the parts to go on and put down some tape to prevent as much contact cement as I can from getting on that bottom edge. I slather both pieces with contact cement and after waiting for them to dry, join them together. Once on, I realized that the glue wasn't enough to keep the flexible leather attached. My heart is sinking. Here you can see that the foam lifts off of the leather. I spent a bit of time brainstorming how to fix this without ruining the entire piece. After a couple of idea fails, the most obvious one hit me. Why not just turn the faux rivets into real ones? I have some leather rivets that are roughly the same size as the recess, and after a stress test of some leather on foam, I think they'll hold with the glue. I drill a hole through the faux rivet and through the leather to make way for the real rivet. There is a shaft in that goes in from the back and a cap that sits on the top. With a special concaved bit and a punch, you hammer it closed. I have a glass tabletop so I can't do this on the video and it's like over 100 degrees outside so just trust that that's what I'm doing. Pushing the pin through, hitting it with a hammer and closing the deal. The tricky part in the hammering was just getting it far enough down that the rivet would close without burning burrowing too far down into the foam. finished here is the end result overall i think they turned out pretty cool the chest plate is pretty legit uh, along with the arm and leg bracers i kind of had a problem solve a little bit as i went through i knew i didn't want to do too much to them but at the same time i needed to tie it into the other parts that have already built so adding those little metal metal bits on there definitely helped and I had a problem solve on the spot after putting on that contacts and then I quickly realized it wasn't going to hold because of the leather still being bendable. So I think it's going to hold up pretty well. The foam that I used for this build, what the foam is extremely rigid and definitely won't have an issue with keeping those rivets in place without just pulling through the foam. Now you could, but it takes a lot of uh, oomph. To do it it's not like you could accidentally you have to purposely try to pull it off and i'm not going to do that so maybe you'll try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to pull something from a medieval collectibles website and customize it to fit your mashup cosplay from a video game and historical references yeah kind of figured maybe you'll get some yay and inevitably they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them, much props. Guess I need to uh, go put it on, so. Peace out. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to continue to see builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.